My name is Martin, and I'm an independent consultant. So this means I'm a robot. And this means that uh, sometimes I have to adapt a kernel driver to the to, to, to some project, and sometimes I just selling the technology to the customer. So I just building it from, from some kind of bricks. And uh, today I would like to tell you about some projects that I am involved to and was involved in last year uh, in the plastics industry. There is the injection molding process in which there are a lot of uh, different machines involved to, for example, do a dosing, the weight dosing of the components. So one of these machines will be Linux powered. Uh, okay, we have the specific customer. The people who are doing the hardware are doing it from like 15 years old designs. They are using Z80, the peak processors, and I'm quite happy with it. But there is a booming usage of Linux. Linux is everywhere. And the hardware uh, you can buy today is became more and more cheaper. It is uh, becoming capable of running uh, Linux out of the box. And uh, hardware vendors support it. Uh, next case, Linux supports a lot of hardware, a lot of protocols, a lot of connectivity. So we have a lot of things out of the box. And security is uh, easy to achieve in Linux. You can uh, just put uh, SSL protocol, throw in HTTP in it, and it's uh, quite secure. It's uh, better than just sending out encrypted packets through the network. <coughs> the security doesn't mean safety critical. It is safety critical <coughs> system or uh, something else. And code, uh, the applications designed for Linux are uh, easy to develop for non-embedded people too. They can work with their laptops and quite reusable. So more and more such a systems should work in real time because the customers demand it. So I have the practical case. There's a company which is doing the injection molding, which uh, does it in injection molding process. You have the plastic granulate, the, the base one, to which you add some uh, some, some, some compo other components like uh, uh, some UFO filters, some color colors, and so on. And I have the application that is uh, running for a few years on the, some kind of RTOS. It's TN kernel, open source, great system for a uh, small 8 bit processor. It scales up to 32 bits, uh, 8091 ATMO. Uh, it's open source software, it's nicely designed, elegant software, and it's well tested. The company which is do, doing the product is very happy with it. But then the customer comes, and the customer wants to have a touch screen, to have a block spool via FTP, because he's got uh, some production standards like ISO 9000 when you have to record all the components you have to consume, machine the amount, the exact time, and so on. A uh, customer wants to have a remote control, have a nice recons building application if uh, the OS has a nice graphics is something overkill. A uh, connected barcode scanner or even some Wi-Fi devices because in those factories there are no room for uh, an upper internet cable to build. Uh, it seems it is too difficult to implement in the, for the, the small to medium companies okay. Uh, only a few programmers in reasonable time in such RTOSs. There are, of course, open source libraries for doing TCP IP stack, but if you connect such devices to the network where there already are a lot of computers, like the, the Windows can do broadcast and so on, it, you have no guarantee that it, it will work. It sometimes it doesn't work. So we have to, have to check if Linux will support it out of the box. Of course, it will not. So, we want a real-time system. This is the real-time definition. Correctness of operation depends not only on your performing of error, but also on the upper limit of the time which operation is completed. This is taken out of the book. In our system, uh, where we have to prove that it works, because uh, this is not a critical system. If something went wrong, uh, nobody dies. There is maybe some part of the products which have to be thrown away, but uh, it's not a, a great problem. So the, the customer will be happy if we just prove him that uh, the system will react in the given time. Yeah, we have some, uh, some, some deadline here. 
Uh, yeah, mathematical proof will be perfect, but it's not possible, I'm afraid. Uh, system is tested, we use test driven development for application, right? And the lines are met, so we test the load, test the real cases uh, of usage of the system. Okay, uh, maybe for safety critical system, the certification, the purpose of certification will be needed and the, the tasks will be huge. So, we have Linux, which is really designed to be really fast, it's designed to maximize the throughput, it's democratic. For example, resources that are equally disposed, right? That the scheduler of its process, uh, starvation, usually the determinism is not taken into account. This changes in 3.0, there are yeah, almost organized brand people and so on. Uh, so that the profit is the, the case in Linux. And in the other case, Linux is a very nice layer based design, <coughs> right? You have a lot of layers built in, in hardware, uh, on the hardware, so kernel is doing almost uh, every time some mechanisms and business logic is <coughs> being implemented in user space, the easiest way. Uh, unfortunately, some of these layers are very complex. Yeah, it's the virtual memory system. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not uh, uh, it's very nice design, but it's very complicated to deal with it. So allocating memory problems. Uh, first, we have to prove to our customer that it will work. So we have done the latency test. Uh, we build a very simple test <coughs> circuit. Very simple. Actually, using a microcontroller. 180 to 800 megahertz ARM microcontroller running Linux, connected GPIO to generator, NE555 standard square signal generator. Uh, this everything connected to oscilloscope, which measures the input signal, output signal, output should follow input. Uh, this was done for uh, the proprietary um, industrial computer uh, based on ARM 1891. Uh, but uh, I, I want to show you the complete computer, the proprietary. So we have also re remade the test on the common uh, development board. Uh, the left one is uh, Atmel based uh, device, quite tall. Quite the right one is Begelboard XM. Begelboard has the 1.8 volt uh, input output, so uh, we have to use some buffers. If we connect it to uh, just a transistor here, you can see the uh, transistor character characteristic is 2.5 microsecond, I believe. It's not the straight line. So it's covered <coughs> over here. So uh, next uh, test was on the DevKit 8000, it's the, the bigger board clone with, uh, <coughs> I think, buffers included right here. In the socket and input output it behaves uh, a bit better. Uh, what were we testing was the very simple drivers. Drivers are actually in GitHub, and uh, all the codes uh, uh, I'm showing uh, is or will be on this GitHub uh, account. So, first driver just uh, connects interrupt to, to the input pin, it responds to input, responds to signal in the interrupt handler. Second driver uses the work queue, which is used in most of the drivers in the kernel. So between the upper half schedules the work queue and the work queue executes them to do really response system can do other things. Maybe some interrupts and so on. The really drivers work uh, that way. So here are the results of the code. code. Uh, a small disclaimer, we're not chasing the mi microseconds here. We just as you later some, uh, some outlines, uh, we don't need to chase microsecond. We are uh, just need to know what, is, what the deadline is. Okay, so the first line going up is input, right? The second line going up is output. <coughs> and oscilloscope on the right is, uh, uh, is turned to not to refresh the screen so that the lines are up there. So you can see that. One line is actually here, one line is actually somewhere here, between the triggers. Mm -hmm. So this is the screenshot. I got something like that. Looks pretty good. Now I get the uh, input line coming up, and uh, this is the response. The response follows the request. Okay. Let's add some, some load, because in the real system, it's doing a lot of things. So we need to 
some, SD, uh, some IO SD card, previous SD card is the primary, primary storage here. We sent some data to a stereo console, so some ASCII data. And to, we uh, probe this pink fluid from upper cost of the system. Well, these are not really uh, the best test you can, uh, you can make because in case of network, the packets, uh, the memory that's allocated to host the packet is then free and then reallocated and free and reallocated and the slab cache is working. So the continuous allocation reallocation of the same size of buffer is uh, uh, tuned up in kernel. So it, it does it uh, in a fast way. So for the real application, you could use the real case test. So you, you do to do to your application to do that right here. Uh, these are results under load. And there is, uh, of course, pretty annoying thing here. We missed the next uh, stretch line. Now it should go down and then somewhere there, go up, somewhere there, go down, somewhere there, but it didn't go down. We have missed it. You can see that here. So, this is just a driver, it's batch, but it's uh, the base kernel. Not real time yet. Uh, actually, in Linux, drivers and software must separate logic from mechanism. Not mechanism provided by kernel logic, uh, business logic, and user space. Uh, so we have interrupt based IO. This is the overview of interrupt based IO. Usually, the user processes open some kind of device, devices exposed to the drivers. Uh, that's something, right? We have uh, under Underneath in the kernel, we have uh, some struct file operations or uh, FB operations, something like that. There are multiple layers, this one and this one maybe. It process reads, it hangs, it reads, it waits on wait queue. Uh, then from the upper side, interrupt occurs. The handler is uh, handling interrupt. Maybe bottom half is scheduled and it uh, wakes up processes on the wait queue. Okay, this is in the time domain here. We tested uh, actually two drivers, one uh, using upper half, bottom half, this is called zero C in out, and four testing real, uh, testing uh, just uh, waiting processes from the upper half of the ground. Uh, so the process is running, it's uh, going to uh, Cisco, the kernel space here, uh, Cisco is uh, suspended on the wait queue and then interrupt comes go on. So just the time process is waiting for input. Uh, for this actual case, in case of using GPIO, this driver starts to model also some upper input output, like you know, ADC can generate interrupt if, it, if the voltage drops below some level or goes up to some level, the camera can uh, raise interrupt if it's, uh, the frame is captured and so on. So just in case of GPIO, if you're using GPIO, you can as well use the sysclass GPIO generic driver. Uh, user process just do all, so it waits for the uh, descriptor to be ready, read right from, from the files exposed to the CSFS, that the action is the same, the input and output are valid. Okay, this is the result. Zoomed out, actually, to see how bad it is. Okay, we have our 30. <coughs> results the same. So let's go to real time. Is it a bit better? Is it fit our case? Uh, what you are talking about in, in real time? So how to read those uh, screenshots? Right. We've got an input signal, the reaction time. We have some deadline. Deadline is not yet defined, but it will be defined by our project. For example, uh, I've got uh, some pneumatic accutators. Pneumatic accutators are 15 milliseconds at best. So, for example, if I fit my reaction in one millisecond, it will be almost non noticeable. It's not, not always the microsecond stuff. Sometimes you have the longer deadlines as well. So, uh, we have reaction time, okay, we have latency. Latency comes from many, many. So from many places in kernel and in application, so there is a uh, best, case, best case and worst case, and the, the worst case is uh, actually interested us more. So deadline point of time before which detection <coughs> should occur, we 
and the card real time system that like must be met, fatal error if not, some fatal injuries, some equipment loss, a lot of, a lot of problems. Uh, film real time, this is our case actually. The like should be met. Uh, if system respond after the real time, nothing bad happens, but the response is useless. So probably we have missed some uh, uh, so some some mechanical uh, parts of the produced one, one one defective product or this can add a lot uh, those uh, which amount of some addition. And a lot of software time where uh, well, where nothing critical has happened. Some jitters, some cursor is, is frozen, it's very frozen like that. Well that's is the time the moment which actually was to read which accurate of course and we have jitter which is the deviation of latency and uh, jitter is this one, yeah, from the minimum to maximum. And the uh, big jitter is uh, also bad. Uh, latency is not, not constant, of course, and, and uh, the jitter also is the, 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 the bad thing which happens. The too large jitter renders system unusable for some cases like data acquisition. Uh, you know, probe the, the device the constant time. We have predictability. It's not about kernel, it's about um, design, but maybe for, it's about computer science. How much time will the calculations take? So we have, in this example, very easy calculations. Uh, in our devices, the calculations are easy too. We have to calculate the PID regulator for, for some time, <coughs> for, some, for some dose, for example. But sometimes you have to do some more complicated uh, operation, FFT, something like that. So no one of these should be used if it is possible to, to minimize latency and jitter, of course. So uh, worst case is what uh, interests us as small. Well. If the worst case is uh, uh, limited, the system is considered real time for us, and the worst case must fit in deadline. Okay. So, when is, shed, when is latency coming from in, in our test, in our system? Uh, there is some uh, hardware-related uh, latency which we cannot avoid. Like for example, this uh, IO buffers to level the voltage at some latency. So, for this slide, there is some latency uh, between ER2 and ER2 handler uh, execution by kernel because kernel can uh, have locked interrupts to something more and so on. Uh, there is uh, also some latency between ERQ handles signal and scheduler is uh, went up to, to run the task, the scheduler also has some um, uh, latency though finally the task is uh, work, work enough here. So overall latency is here and some things, some, some parts of the latency can be measured in the different ways. For example, the F-trace was good for us to uh, measure in the scheduler latency. There is uh, in this kernel EPAC uh, tracing, there is a tracer for scheduler wake-up, which is quite good for the application. And other things are measured by oscilloscope. So we have two approaches okay, we have tested. Microkernel, so put <coughs> your RT processes on the same level with Linux, Linux is actually one of the processes running under microkernel. Microkernel is what uh, runs on hardware. Uh, we found uh, about two, three main projects. Elta Linux, it was the first version, it seems to be the open source version seems to be dead right now. Um, it was based on 2.4 kernel, I believe. Uh, the iPy, which is a part of uh, a DLS retain system, uh, interrupt file, so we will explain about this. Uh, and two things based on the IPI, AirPi and Xenomai. AirPi seems to be a more academic project and Xenomai is focused on uh, uh, industry usage. So we took the last one. <coughs> and our thing, RT preempt. There was uh, about two or three presentations here for, from smart people about RT preempt, so we should already know how it works in kernel. It in first gives us almost all parts in kernel being printable. And the thing that I'm 
very happy with is that it gives me the um, free that interrupts. I'll show you the next slide. So, how does the IPI work? It's just a patch to a Linux kernel that uh, uses the Linux uh, interrupt functions, the low level uh, Linux functions, to control interrupts on the machine. And uh, it uh, looks like it's being the microkernel, they call it nanokernel even. It's only uh, take control of the interrupts. And uh, these interrupts are then scheduled to so called domains. Domains have priorities. So we run Xenomai or Airtai as the first class domain, and uh, Linux as the low uh, priority domain. Interrupt can be uh, exclusively scheduled to one or another domain or can be shared. All interrupts and all system calls are passed through IPy. It's done by modifying the actual Linux, uh, Linux code. So the events are dispatched to different IP domains. It works. Now, in the Xenomai enabled kernel, <coughs> uh, from Linux you can read across IPy if you have the domains here exposed to files. So uh, we have some interrupt which is uh, wired, so it's exclusively connected to Xenomai and uh, one which is virtual, I think it's so called shared interrupt. The Linux domain is the priority 100 and the uh, Xenomai domain has the priority topmost. Okay, the really nice thing about Xenomai is how it is designed. Based on the IPy, it adds uh, something to kernel and to libraries. So basically, you have two kernels in your system, Xenomai and Linux. And because of uh, some additions to task struct in Linux, which is describing the process, the task, the processor, uh, can uh, migrate between the domains. It can work on Linux domain or on real-time uh, domain. And uh, of course, your goal is to use only syscalls that are connected or wired to Xenomai, because this, is, this will only give me the real-time capabilities. If I call some Linux uh, stuff, it's not. So no networking, no uh, no more application, uh, allocation of the applications going and, and limited connectivity. So, and the uh, second nice thing about Xenomai is that it is uh, implementing something like Xenomai RTOS, native RTOS, a generic one, built from modules. And there is something called schemes. Uh, some part of skin is implemented in kernel, some kind of skin is implemented in library. The skin uh, lets you translate the proprietary RTOS API to Xenomai native API. So there are skins for POSIX, so POSIX RT, uh, RT task can use, uh, and also for Alexworks, uh, Echoes, and some other uh, real time OSs. And uh, there's no skin for TN kernel, I'm afraid, so it, it wasn't for us, but I know that in, uh, some tests were successful to port it public works software actually to, to Xenomai. It, it worked. So, uh, AirDai is also built on, uh, on, on, on IPy, but has the more academic approach. They do what, what they need, not going the whole thing. But AirDai has the uh, really nice use case of uh, some industrial control machine. It's called the Linux CNC. Linux CNC is the Ubuntu Live CD plus AirDai enabled kernel plus application running on the x86 PC, which has some GUI applications, the G language, the language is for controlling uh, some machines, industrial machines like uh, CNC machines. Uh, it has process visualization, probably for in GUI application. It got a software PLC, which is good for learning the latter language to program, but not, not only, you can also connect some input out with it. It got drivers for certain hardware. Because it's running on PC, you have a lot of problems uh, in real life. The biggest problem uh, for me was the <coughs> SMI, Software Managed Interrupt. So uh, if you have special, specialized hardware, you can program uh, some, some, some output, and it's every millisecond in outputs uh, in 
some, some common, it more, more or less works. But uh, if you do not have a special hardware, you need to use uh, timer-based stepping. So the next timer is ticking, and each tick is one step. So this digital matters, so matters a lot here. So Linux CNC gives you the application, which is actually based on something like uh, uh, a latency test, uh, a cyclic, cyclic test, uh, which just uh, measures how, how good is the timer. So for example, this is the results for this particular laptop. And if I uh, connected and disconnected uh, Ethernet cable, the max jitter grown to something like 200 microseconds. Very bad. So that's nice and mild. Okay, this is a couple of applications. It's very nice, the drag which code is displayed at the bottom, and I got the machine visualization, and I can program it and throw it into a real machine. Okay, but our machine wasn't supported, and we didn't want to use PC. We want to use ARM processor because the customer with the hardware vendor wanted to produce the some robust computer. So we use RT Preamp. RT Preamp is almost as good as Xenomai and Latency, and it is scale, scale better. So if you have a large, a large amount of RT processes, probably RT Preamp will be better than Xenomai. Xenomai is quite good for the small applications. Okay, so the first thing about Preamp RT is that it preempts almost everything in kernel. And the uh, nice thing for me is that it's uh, got interrupted as treats. So you have the selection under the kernel features preemption mode. You can turn complete preemption real time. And for the 2633, this is important from our case, uh, the results of the treat software could treat hard case that should be turned on. For 3.0, uh, there is not, I think, that the, the interrupts handles of tree that uh, default by default. So in standard kernel, if you have the high priority task, which is running here, and the interrupt comes, any interrupt, for example, the network packet arrives, uh, it's preempted, interrupt handler runs, and uh, after it's finished, we will get back to the uh, process. And in the interrupt streets enabled kernel, only the small Code, small handler is executed. This handler schedule the work queue to do the real interrupt handling, and the interrupt is locked, is blocked from here to here. After the interrupt handler will unlock the, uh, unblock this interrupt and it will be handled. So if you have, for example, 16 interrupt in your system register, so your high priority task will be uh, will be preempted 16 times the duration of that little handler. And this is constant, so we have the deadline here uh, met. That's a constant uh, maximum worst case. So this is 108, uh, 180 MHz ARM, which is doing the, the <coughs> third case, the switching is done in user process and it really works. You can actually measure what is the worst uh, worst reaction time here. So maximum latency is about half of the millisecond. So it fits our need and uh, it was running like uh, about for six hours uh, and tested with this basic test to do that in a real application. <coughs> emulate some other real application load. So what can be seen on this chart here on your load? Uh, so real time is not equal to real fast. You have the maximum latency limited, but in the same uh, in the same system we the minimum latency is bigger. Here the minimum latency was about how I don't have a slide here for this. Yeah. And the kernel, this is very important, with RT preempt path does not make the whole system real time. You know, this uh, case is real time, this interrupt handler. Uh, there's a far away from this interrupt handler to real uh, working system. So 
you have to design the application in a special way. And uh, Linux gives us the POSIX 30 app. It's defined in IEEE 1003.1b and uh, it's, the, it's supported in Linux and also in glibc. The Microsoft glibc doesn't support some parts of the uh, POSIX RT app. And uh, we have the scheduler with real-time scheduling classes, uh, FIFO, for example, and uh, also the impurities. <coughs> we have the memory locking. Don't do anything without memory locking first. Uh, we'll see what it, what it will do. Uh, we have RT signals, which can be used by application or sometimes are used internally by our things like I.O. <coughs> uh, yeah, there are semaphores with priority inheritance uh, for user space that is a full text. Uh, in a special case of the uh, user to be to, 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 to use a prior thing, inheritance. Um, timers, especially clock monotonic, is interesting. The other timer clock real time uh, can be changed by user changing day or <coughs> changing some day, but clock monotonic is constantly growing. And also IO, that's a place input output uh, because well, subsystem. IO subsystem is not, not real time definitely, yet. it depends on uh, some disk drives which are not too good. So, we <coughs> built for our customer the demo uh, of the industrial control system that uh, will use kernel, mm, will use uh, POSIX API to implement something like that. We have a wait dozen process and specification we have some loose material or fluid, or maybe tea, for example, uh, loaded into some containers. We have to load the exact amount of uh, material into container. So the main time that all of this machine, you know, this pipe, is uh, suspended on, on the weight, the tensometer, the device that uh, outputs the voltage proportional to the, to the weight uh, of that. Uh, some conveyor robot or worker loads the container to the bottom. Uh, Appearance of the container triggers interrupt. Uh, it can be just some connector, it can be the camera which detects uh, there is something uh, uh, connected, or so on. The main tank has a limited capacity and it can be replenished from the main silo with that pipe on the left uh, by turning on the vacuum here. I can suck the uh, granulate and it is not here, but if the vacuum is working, the whole machine is given a huge kick uh, because there are a lot of shakes in the factory, in the factory floor, and there are huge machines and uh, everything is shaking. So uh, we cannot dose when the vacuum is on. It should be considered. So it's a very easy application, but very, very easy, very fast format. So it can be modeled as the following. Finite state machine. Finite state machines are good for real time uh, application because they are really very easy to implement that. The most of the time, our process is waiting for trigger. And if the container appears, the process is triggered. And then uh, oh, maybe it waits for a vacuum to stop and then start something called balance leveling. And, uh, waiting for trigger is triggered by the interrupt of this connector or camera and uh, any other state is triggered by timer because we can only call the, the, the tensometer the, the way it does it. So uh, the vacuum is stopped, the balance <coughs> is leveled, we know the, the exact weight of the, the container of the closet doesn't start, valve is open, so weight doesn't here every one millisecond process is checking what's the weight uh, stay status, what's, what's, the, what's the actual weight. So uh, if the weight is equal to the uh, amount of material we wanted to dose, maybe plus minus some PID results, because this has some buffer, that we stop the material, will stop dosing in a moment. So the system stops and waits for another trigger. And maybe it was it was switched to actually stop. 
put it to stop, this is clearly have the thing can go to stop. Okay. Uh, we cannot, we want to have the, for example, seven inch display screen to visualize the process for the, for the worker, for the management, and maybe some network connection to, to make it, uh, to make it remotely accessible. So we cannot design a full application GUI to be real time. We do something like that. We split the application to the two models. One model is doing, this worker is doing the, a finite state machine actually in the dosing and this part has to be real time. And other thing is GUI. <coughs> so they have to interact through POSIX child memory and maybe message queue in a lockless way. <coughs> so how to do it? Our hardware, USB-C for development, that went on Linux, I got it here, very nice. A uh, custom board is used for production, running 2.6 port 32, port 7, port 2, RT30. Uh, this was done during last year, so the 3.0 was in the early state, so we do later test bigger versions in 3.0, and we use something called the latest stable from Open Source Automation Development Labs. This is a German organization which uh, in, uh, has the farm of test servers and they actually uh, test the real capabilities of kernel and they announce something like uh, latest stable kernel if the kernel is uh, uh, not worse than, than previous it, it works pretty well and uh, it's good for customer and there is an organization who has tested it so you can look at those pages and uh, recently the page covering the uh, latest stable was closed only for members or kernel developers. Kernel developers, right. We participate in Qt, C++. Uh, we need some special hacks to Qt to make it uh, running smoothly on 180 MHz uh, uh, ARM processor. User space is minimal uh, by the build by build root. We use X4 on SD card as a primary storage, optimized with loader to load it fast. Mm, uh, Real-time process is running under real-time preamp 13. It runs a separate process in C, communicates with GUI and POSIX thread memory through message, message queue, and uses a lockless way. Two control structures are stored in uh, SHM, some kind of cyclic buffer. One is utilized by running the process, which is puts some program <coughs> to it, and other can be changed by GUI. Then uh, GUI instructs process to switch, and the process will switch to the, in the next big loop of the finite state machine. <coughs> and other ways to consider were using Xenomai task, because process using utilizing the POSIX API can be easily ported to Xenomai. Uh, this is only for testing. Uh, to ease development, you can also use the POSIX treats. Treats have the shared virtual memory, so the data connection will be very fast, but have a different scheduling setting. So the scheduler for the worker can be set to uh, to, to, to create a real-time priority as well. And uh, this one, the, the last one, became also a good um, good frame for, for doing some things. Uh, the hardware vendor put two chips, two ARM chips actually, on the one board, and one chip was running something like worker process and other chip was communicating with it using uh, a fast serial connection uh, like SPI for example so this was the nice thing yeah. what have we used uh, what, we have to sh sh what, what should have been done to, to, make it, uh, to make it working actually uh, first of all we have decided to use C to, to implement the worker but uh, Make it object-oriented, uh, like uh, we are looking at the kernel code where you have the nice object-oriented like file operations, which has the functions pointers and so on. Uh, utilizing design pattern was a good idea. Uh, the very simple pattern was getter setter. Everything you pull from uh, control structure or set is done not by accessing the memory but accessing some function that accesses memory. So changing it to sending and receiving some data over the serial was very easy. Uh, 
C++ will be nice too. Of course, not uh, polymorphism and so on. No, not complicated cases, but, but C++, the code is nicer. Scheduler priority should be set. Interrupts uh, running threads and interrupt threads are set to check before 50, so your process should be working faster than the interrupt. Uh, shut deadline would be nice too if you have a lot of such worker process on one system. I think there's a presentation for shut deadline. You have to, it's absolutely, you have to <coughs> lock all memory and lock all of it. Current, future memory allocated by process. Locking memory doesn't mean that memory uh, fault, that the page fault function won't be called, it will. So you have to touch all memory you have uh, uh, allocated and lock it. So only then, if it's pre faulted it will stay. Uh, the big thing was pre-allocating the stack, making the stack alone, not being allocated. Uh, your process probably um, have the stack shared with the process you have to fork it. So there is a function utilizing some GCC hacks, no line, as inside, that when called will pre-allocate some amount of stack. And, uh, there's also some danger if you are using multi-threaded design, you have, for example, four megabytes of stack. So it's a problem for low memory systems. And uh, the whole thing is taking machine loop is done using the POSIX timer. So here's the code. You can call clock monotonic, program it, check if uh, it doesn't overflow and, and slip on this uh, clock. And uh, I use the um, timer ups time, absolute time, to program the clock, which is the lower scenario, the upper scenario. If, uh, we will be not using absolute time, but not absolute time. And the last thing to build application on is to, if you want to write some data, uh, use I.O. Because I.O. gives you the struct I.O.C.B. you fill with descriptor and buffer, and then you call I.O. write, and I.O. write is exit immediately. And the is that you cannot touch the buffer until the kernel tells you that uh, it is ready. The buffer is not copied to the kernel, it stays in the user uh, virtual memory. So, uh, on the, I believe on the GitHub you can find the, the implementation of some cyclic buffer using IO, which is very fast uh, and this is must have for the IO storage. Unfortunately, right now Linux. Network sockets are not uh, IO enabled. And the last thing, in our case, uh, ever, uh, is the hardware circuit to make it, uh, to make the emergency stop, to make it uh, being safe for people. So, the Shimani Antlinum is emergency stop in, in Polish. So, for the real time system, the software and the hardware has to be attached. Emergency stop for safety and also, as you can see here, the deferred writing of data needs some fancy hardware style, hardware hacks. So, in real case, in this slide, you can see the huge capacitor here, which is able to power the RF processor and memory and SD card for about one second, which is very good for flashing and reading buffers. Okay, the code is available and I was able to sell this to my, uh, to my customers, to, to management, so it works. <laughs> okay, any questions? and one with a dual processor, let's say. Yes. Would be real time. So which of the solutions would you use and why? Uh, I would use uh, RT preempt because it's easy, it's elegant, and it's nice to write code. It's really integrated with, with Linux, with a lot of Linux things. But uh, we, 
don't have the strong real-time requirements for, the, for that system. It's, it's not hard real-time. So. Second point, right? And uh, if you have to control some, for example, laser cutter or some some such systems where the uh, you know the, the user security is the, the first goal, I would use the uh, design or use two processors. So what do you mean by not strong real time? I mean, it's such a deterministic always. Yes. Uh, so it is deterministic. Deterministic, but I cannot I cannot uh, test every case. There are a lot of processes, a lot of things running, so I'm code. not sure. It's uh, too much code in Linux for for me. So if I would go to sleep at night and <laughs> not wake up, I, I would use the, the second processor. Question? Yes. Did you experience? Uh, clock monotonic to never be monotonic or to, to sometimes not increase. I have some vague memory of there being an issue with clock monotonic. Uh, you know, the question was, was I having some issues with clock monotonic? No, I haven't, I haven't solved it, but probably it depends on what driver you're using for the clock. So, uh, I was doing it on quite old platform platform. This sock has a lot of errata updated. and everything works. It might be different for you know living edge technology. But unfortunately, my customer doesn't want living edge technology to work for 10 years. Any, any more questions? Yes. You said that you have to hack two teams around the one hundred and fifty megahertz. What kind of hacks uh, were that? The, the biggest uh, the biggest gain in performance was when I throw out a font uh, rendering machine and put a different font on it. I also experimented with the old Qt, like 2.3. Yes. The base design of Qt is, Qt is very well designed from the beginning, so it, it is no such big difference if you program such easy applications in the 4 or 5 or 2.3. <coughs> But in, in 2.3 it was smaller and faster. So just uh, not, not changing the, the QT code, but just uh, arranging it. Okay. Tuning some includes, but not to, for example, uh, compile in the current cursor, the cursor, cursor is uh, You can do it by turning on <coughs> cursor on the while on, on, on runtime, but uh, the best. Okay, so thank you very much.